Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have today with us Muriel Kipspol Huisman. Did I pronounce it correctly? <laughs> Huisman. Ha Huisman. Okay, she is the statistical analyst for uh, Fnatic and is now uh, kind of transferring into a coaching role. And well, Fnatic, you didn't do so well this tournament. What was it? Uh, our communication, honestly. We had some communication problems already at Manila. And here, if you look at the Alliance match, for example, you can see that uh, mostly Mushi and Midwan are not on the same page, but everyone is, like, it's very inefficient. Sometimes they're just hanging around. You can see them discussing with each other. And we actually worked on that already. If you look at our match against Liquid, you can see that we do it a great deal better. But the problem is, it's Liquid. And Liquid is out there winning right now. Yeah, Liquid kind of seems like your new nemesis. I mean, they kicked you out of uh, Manila. They kicked you out here. Um, why is it that you... Are they just that good? Or are you personally, like, uh, not as good against Liquid? Do you draft maybe heroes that don't work against them? Mm, I think Liquid are very good at the moment. And they know how to find your weak spots. And we have quite a lot of them. And the problem is that uh, we have a lot of individual talent on our team like a lot of individual skills, but Liquid work together as one unity, and that's, they can just drive a wedge between us. So yeah, I think they are very good, but I also think that we specifically have some extra issues to hammer out against them. So you talked about uh, already twice about the issues inside the team, and that you kind of tried to work them out. I mean, you didn't, you didn't have a lot of time since Manila, I guess it was about one week. Um, is this your main focus, the, the internal issues, or are you working on uh, how to beat certain teams? In Manila, I was mostly working on how to beat certain teams. So, providing them with stats. I see myself as sort of an, like the team goes to war. I'm their weaponsmith. I give them tools to defeat the enemy with. But around here, like, this is the thing. You hear people say that people take ESL not seriously because it's just after Manila, people are tired, people are saving strats, whatever. It's not that people don't take the tournament seriously, but it's about the focus is somewhere else. If we wanted to 100% win this tournament, we would go all in on looking at the opponents, looking at how to beat them. But instead, because we want to focus on the basics, we go to ourselves. So we take ourselves very seriously this tournament. But we may not have done the most about the opponents. So it differs from tournament to tournament. For the previous one, winning, winning, winning. Yeah, 100% stats, opponents, everything. For this tournament, now that we got some time, we need to look further ahead. We focus on ourselves. So uh, the ESL is more of a team building exercise for you. I mean, of course you want to win, but uh, it's not like the big picture. The big picture is always TI. Yeah. Like, even next Autumn Major, the TI is already the big next big picture. So, uh, you talked a lot about internal issues and uh, Mushi and Mid1. Was this, some sort, uh, was this something that maybe Mushi's absence made happening? Mm, not really his absence. You got to understand that when you have someone with such a history on your team, that brings a lot of, it commands a lot of respect, really. Mm. And he knows a lot. And you need to try and get the most out of that guy. But you also need to make sure that the other players are not feeling overwhelmed. Mm. And that's a pretty delicate balance, actually. I was surprised. So is there actually ego or something in the team uh, a big issue? Or are they all professionals and uh, kind of focused? I was surprised at how professional they were, yeah. They are very aware of their own issues. Like, if I ask them what they said they did wrong, they will usually come up with the same things that I did already. They know what to do, but perhaps they do not have the most experience in... Well, I said that wrong. They know what goes wrong, mm -hmm. but they do not know how to fix it. Yeah, but this is, this is kind of your job. Um, I gu I'm guessing as a statistical analyst, uh, you are not only providing stats about the enemy teams, but also about your team. You're just looking at maybe we can farm more efficiently. Um, how do you actually do that? Mm, well, looking at our team themselves is actually how I got the job. Hmm? It's uh, I made a document detailing one of the, the other teams. 
and they were so impressed that they were like, all right, let's mm. let's do us now. And by the time they actually hired me, they'd already made changes mm. according to the things that I'd said. So something that I could see, for example, is that we do not get enough farm out of our mm. lanes compared to the others. Like we consistently get too low CS, for example, or we might uh, use a lot of smokes without mm. actually getting kills mm. or towers, or we might uh, buy way too many sentry wards, <laughs> DJ. <laughs> uh, so you basically you go to the players and say, you only have 400 GPM, step the shit up. Not really, not really, no. It's no. a team effort. And like if a player gets consistently low GPM, we mm. have to ask ourselves, is that because we would need something else from him than farm? Mm. Or do we need farm and are we actually, is it actually wrong that he doesn't have it? Because there's mm. a difference. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can starve players. Uh, I think we saw that in a, in a liquid game uh, where uh, Jarex was was really really poor and still made the, uh, made the plays, al although he generally plays uh, plays more of a four position. And we've seen strats, uh, especially involving maybe a doom, where you starve your support but come back with uh, with four carries. Um, in terms of the opponent, what do you actually look at uh, on their side? Do you look on uh, at early rotations? Maybe when do they march out or anything like that? Yeah, for example, LGD had a really, really, really um, obvious smoke timing. They always smoked mm -hmm. at 10 minutes and 30 seconds. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, not perhaps on the second, but... No, no not on the second, but... Between 10 and 11, they smoke three. And uh -uh. it depends on like, if they already had a mech on Xiao 8. So if they have a mech on Xiao 8, LGD will smoke out at 10.30. Yeah, well, that is actually quite interesting. With his two supports. Which is the most unpredictable team right now? Because because you said New LGD teams. was really uh, predictable, and which which is the most unpredictable? The like the less experienced the team is, the yeah. more they're flying by the seat of their pants. Yeah. Alliance is really very predictable. They play a really tight game. <laughs> they gotta they get that shit down. I mean, they have they have termed uh, they have coined the term Red Dota, and th this is what they played for a long time. They don't play. No, they they, they right didn't now. play it anymore, but you can still see if Alliance is behind. They spread out, they farm the map, they try to split push the lanes, and so they, they have their incredibly style. Incredibly well. And you can also see kind of Liquid. Uh, they have this ganking style. In games, they find the kills. They are now playing outside with a Ricky Life Stealer again against uh, against OG. So are really only new teams unpredictable, or can some some teams maybe uh, catch you off guard? Mm, off guard, like. For example, with hero picks, it's usually not going to happen yeah. because I look at all of them. I look at what they can play, what mm. they want to play. The only way they predict is they surprise us with hero pick mm. is if they play something that they're not comfortable with and mm. that they haven't actually practiced mm. because otherwise I'd know. Mm. But in terms of like a big team doing something surprising, not really. Like, for example, I guess the fact that Admiral Bulldog, for example, lost Manila, mm. he was playing more of fighting style Broodmother. Mm. That was kind of new. That mm. was, I didn't expect him to just go running at the enemy. Mm. But usually a player has a certain signature and they're not going to deviate much mm. from that. They, they can't, really. Mm. Well, the, the brood member ac actually know uh, is rather old school. It was done in 2012 uh, by Aoi. <laughs> and he said, yeah, the first item you have to go is not the Orchid, but the Manta style. But it was many, many changes ago with the, with the web and, and what's on. Um, but circling uh, back a little bit to Fnatic, um, the last two tournaments, Manila went well. Uh, ESL won, not so much. Uh, what changes do you have for the upcoming uh, events? Well, we're going to do so many events right now. We hope to have Nanyang coming mm. up. and then What is actually happening in Nanyang? Um, what do you mean? Uh, w which event is there? It's like it, it's named the Nanyang Championships. And oh. it is in Beijing this time, I believe. I'm not entirely sure because I might not be going. Mm. I was hired really recently. On the spot. <laughs> On the spot, basically, yeah. So I still need to actually make sure that I got a Chinese visa mm. and otherwise the players are going to go without mm. me. And then after there's a big USA tour, we might want a boot camp there. And then uh, we have the summit, we have Star Ladder mm. and NTI. Mm. So we have a pretty full agenda and we also need to find some time to actually work on ourselves in between and not just yeah. 
Try so, to beat people. So, so this is the this is the point basically up to TI. Work on yourselves. Uh, work on the strats. Work uh, especially on the communication in the team. Yeah. And uh, um, you've been for the team uh, with the team for not as long, but I still want to ask you: Do you have a funny story to share? Does it does a player maybe have a funny <laughs> habit or anything? <laughs> we are we are always habit. looking for insight. Uh, no, well, I guess uh, the the way I got hired is kind of funny in and of itself, and I've seen a lot of players sort of joking yeah. about it. Yeah, well, because the thing is, um, the team didn't know that I was a woman, <laughs> and neither <laughs> did the manager. I'd been talking with Eric Rain on Skype for a couple of weeks because I they'd commissioned a document. And he never me. called. Basically, you only no, type no, because we, we otherwise he would have. And I have my full name on Skype. Yeah. So, like he could, uh, but he kept calling me man and dude, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> sure, man, dude. <laughs> I, I I call everyone dude. Everyone calls me dude. But after a while, just before the interview, it was like, all right, you do need to know because I think you're not just calling me man and dude out of you know. <laughs> I think you're actually not realizing that you're going to have a woman on the phone. <laughs> it was like, mm, I guess your name should have given it away, <laughs> Muriel. Yeah. Yeah, and then the team got informed, and when I got, like, when I arrived at, at the hotel, mm. they were all like, all right, all right, we got informed that you have not, in fact, been a dude <laughs> all this time. <laughs> but did it actually make a difference? Like, were they like, oh, boy, I'm a woman? Or are they just like, oh, oh well, she's a girl, I wouldn't have expected that. Yeah, exactly the last thing. They didn't expect it, and they actually, I think they thought it was kind of awesome. <laughs> I like to think that. They were really welcoming about it. Mm. Like we haven't we haven't actually talked about it except that sometimes we tell this story to other people. <laughs> and you go like, yeah, we didn't know. <laughs> it's uh. so funny. But I mean, it's also great because they hired me for what's in here. Yeah, you actually do have a, a background in in some sort of academics. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, in here is what counts. It is. Now, uh, two last questions. Um, the first, uh, how much time do you actually? Uh, need to prepare for a new team how much time do you spend per day on statistics during the manila major yeah i probably spent like because you have a new opponent every two days like i had two days to prepare for the group mm -hmm. stage and then after the group stage two days to, to prepare for the next opponent um i'd like to spend about eight to ten hours per opponent i i did not get to do a lot of sleeping no sleep for those who work in esports. Nope. Okay. Um, I would wrap this interview up. Uh, you were amazing. The, que uh, the answers were amazing. Now, do you want to give any shout outs, any fans? Yeah. Um, sponsors. sponsors. Like ad advertise. <laughs> uh, I mean, you, you, can, you, can, you can use uh, some, some paper and like, yeah, hire us, hire us. We need money. No. Uh, shout out to, to Cartsdota. He gave me like, he gave me the courage to go show my stuff mm -hmm. to the world. And it worked out. It worked out so well. And shout out for the team for just being awesome and actually listening to me, even though I'm an incredible noob. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this was Muriel Kipspool Huisman. 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 It's like Huisman. I really try. I can't do it. And follow her on at Kipspool. At Kipspool, yeah. And expect more to come. <laughs>